What's up, my peeps? Joshua Smith here with another GSD Mode podcast interview. So today, you guys, another special epic guest on the show. This guy is a dude that knows a thing or two about online lead generation, right? So um, he was a very successful real estate agent. No longer is he a real estate agent, but it's not because he dropped out due to lack of success. You know, first year sold, uh, uh, had, had a decent first year. Second year, catapulted his growth to $10 million in gross volume sales. A second year, third year, did $13 million. Um, but during this transition or during this growth phase, he, he realized he had this gift. He had this gift for social media marketing. He just realized how it worked. And he started teaching courses and classes in his local market. And then just had this demand um, to go out there and, and, and teach others and, and not just teach and coach, but to take on other people's advertising, which is now transition and turn into this massive <coughs> nationwide uh, 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 you know, social media ad agency that he now owns and operates, um, which is following his true passion, his true love. And you're going to see in this interview um, how brilliant this dude is at this stuff. So we go really deep. It's a really high level Facebook uh, uh, targeting interview um, that you guys are going to dig, that you are going to enjoy. But real quick, before uh, we jump onto this interview, I want to make this uh, our plug, our sponsors that make all this possible. Our first sponsor is my 90 Day Mastery Boot Camp, um, which is my personal mentorship program that I that I do. Right. So if you want to spend 12 live sessions with me, three to three and a half hours each, you get four months of daily access to me. Actually, James, our guest that we're interviewing in the podcast today, he started off taking the boot camp. Part of his success of blowing up in real estate was directly due to the boot camp that then led him on. Also, the things in the boot camp also taught him and gave him some of the, the skill sets he needed and the mindset that he needed to go out there and take his life big, chase his passions, chase his dreams. Um, so he was a boot camp member as well. Um, but in, again, uh, 90 Day Mastery Boot Camp, my personal mentorship program, you get my whole entire playbook, my operations manual, and uh, mentoring you uh, for four full months where you have daily access to me. Make sure when you sign up to enter Live Mastery, L-I-V-E-M-A-S-T-E-R-Y, all caps, all one word, all together to get the biggest discount available. Next sponsor is PerfectStormNow.com, by far the most effective, affordable uh, real estate software, lead generation front end uh, uh, website, plus back end CRM software that exists out there. Everything that we're going to talk about in the interview today, you need a few things to do online advertising, a few things to do Facebook ads very well. Number one, you need the knowledge to go out there and how to do the Facebook ads. Number two, you need an effective website that you can get them to, to, to generate a lead with. Then number three, you have to have a follow up or a very effective follow up protocol with your CRM. Um, so you add, if you want to go out there and dominate digital marketing, dominate online marketing, we are not stuck paying Zillow and these third parties huge amounts of money. You need an effective website and an effective CRM. PerfectStormNow.com is exactly that. If you sign up, make sure to enter uh, Mastery PSN, M-A-S-T-E-R-Y P-S-N, all caps, all one word, all together. That'll save you the $200 registration fee and uh, get you the program on a month-to-month -month option. Last sponsor is REO University. So this is at www.reomasteryuniversity.com. 22 modules that teaches you everything you need to know how to go out there and dominate and kick massive ass in the REO marketplace to ensure that your business is recession-proof. Look, you guys, it's never a matter of when the market's going to crash. It's just a matter of, 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 or not a matter of if it's going to crash. It's always just a matter of when. Historically, these markets have ups and downs. Never means that your business needs to experience ups and downs, right? You should always be experiencing ups. You should always be experiencing growth if you know how to adapt. You've got to have these skill sets so you never leave your business in a vulnerable state. And don't wait for the market crash. That's too late, right? Because you're going to have cats like me, dudes like me that already have these skill sets that are going to be light years ahead of you and you're not going to be able to catch up. You need these skill sets now before the market crashes so you're prepared and you're ready. So check us out, www.reomasteryuniversity.com. All right, you guys, we're going to jump on in today's podcast. Make sure you've got a pen and paper because you're going to need to take a lot of notes. I mean, this dude goes really deep into a lot of different strategies that you want to take some notes on. We, we cover this stuff pretty fast, you know, right? Um, this is, I mean, years and years and years worth of knowledge that it's taking this guy to learn and we're, we're unpacking his brain in about an hour in this podcast. So be ready for that. Be prepared. Um, we're going to jump on in today with our interview with James Rimbert. Uh, see you guys inside the podcast and hopefully you enjoy this as much as I did. Well, 
What is up, my peeps? Joshua Smith here with another GSD Mode podcast interview every single week. We interview top entrepreneurs and just straight up top badasses out there dominating their space. So people choosing to not live a life of mediocrity, but instead to go out there and create big, amazing, epic lives for themselves, their families, as well as have a big impact on others while they exist. So today, you guys, got another rock star, amazing guest on the show. Um, so this is a dude I've known for several years. This is a guy that was a very successful real estate agent. Um, then realized that his true gift was in social media marketing and created a massive successful company now where they run uh, social media ads for realtors all over the, the United States, maybe even beyond the United States, which, which we'll, I guess we'll find out here shortly, but really stoked and honored to have James Rambert on the show. The show, my friend. How are you coach? Yeah. And how stoked, stoked to have y'all, man. It's, it's, uh, and, you know, I, we've known each other for a while, right? Um, and uh, when, I, when I first met you, you were a real estate agent. And, you know, just watching you and, and, and expand, adapt, shift, really find it and identify what your superpower is. And then now your, your company's just on fire, dude. It's, it's pretty epic to, to witness and watch, man. It, it's getting there. <laughs> yeah. It's a big thanks to, uh, big thanks to you um, overall. I mean, just the, the, the mindset shift collectively that you help build up really help make those decisions so um, i just really hope anybody that's a part of your coaching understand shit goes beyond real estate it's all life yep yep couldn't agree more man and before we get into that because we'll, we'll dive into all of that and what what that like moment was where you you had that internal epiphany if you will of you know hey i'm trying to create all success in real estate and you were you know you were doing very well in real estate but then you, you just made this this shift, right? Which is, um, w which again, we'll get all into that. But before we get into that, man, I'm always intrigued in our guest journeys that led them into entrepreneurship in the first place. So, like, how did this whole journey start? If you're on the clocks, like, how did it start in the first place, dude? I, the funny part is, I've never, I've never had a, an official job. Like, I've always kind of made money myself. Like when I was, when I was, and then you know, you hear the, the cliche entrepreneur talk, like lemonade stands. And, yeah all this other stuff. I actually used to take uh, candy, cases of candy, and take it over to New York and uh, sell it. I still remember two for three, four for six. So we used to sell it for, and I said, I mean, on a Friday, uh, excuse me, a Thursday, Friday, because those were the days that I could really, really operate out there. I would make anywhere between four to $500 a day. Then we started taking people on tea, which we called the territory. So I would, you know, buy the cases for uh, 15, um, case would kick back, I think about like 115 after everything was said and done. They kicked me back 35. The rest they got the key. So, and from there, it evolved. Uh, I moved from that area because it was a, now this is the funny part. I mean, I grew up in Jersey City. If anybody know about Jersey City, that's that's like uh, it's like gladiator school, if you want to you give a term to it. And uh, I can remember coming home and uh, you know, you're stopping on a corner and you're talking to everybody and cops pull over it and the whole situation kicks off. Now, I just got off T. You know what I mean? I keep in mind, it's a lot of extra stuff happening on the corner that I'm not really involved with, but my money kind of connected to, okay, these dudes is doing something off, but you got like 400 bucks in your pocket. How did you get it? Me say I'm selling candy sounded insulting. They took my money. So my mom, she was like, I, no more going on tea. And uh, that spearheaded to, I had no way to really make money. I was young. It wasn't like I, I needed the money. I just, it just was a way to make money. And I can remember, you remember Kmart? You, you ever seen a Kmart? Oh, yeah, yeah. All right, Kmart, we was in Kmart one time, and uh, they had like these cases of cookies. And they were like a dollar. And we were next to this area called Bayonne. And uh Picked up a, you know, I, I got some money from my mom's and got like 10 boxes. And I wanted to test it out. And I was like, hey, Ma, can you take me around the corner? She was like, well, what do you want to do? I want to see if, if, if we can sell some of these cookies. What 10 cases. She took me around the corner. I sold my first box. Never let, I didn't leave until I was done selling all 10. And we did that until Kmart ran out of the, uh, ran out of the cookies. But that lasted maybe about three months. And it just be headed from that point on. So, so what, what led to even that though? Like what, what, like what created the drive to even think of, 
selling, you know, buying these cookies and selling them? I mean, did you, did you have somebody or whether it was like a mentor through like a TV show or somebody that you knew or that you were kind of trying to model after? Like how, how do those dots even connect at a young age? You know what? My dad, my dad, uh, I didn't want to be, I didn't want to be trapped. And my dad would, would work. He would go to work, like leave to go to work like three o'clock in the morning, come home like four or five o'clock at night. And we never really had time to, to really connect. Like my dad was around, but he wasn't around type thing. But yeah. I knew what he, what he had to do. And that was like six, like five days a week. And then Friday nights, he was a pastor. So he ran a church. So Friday nights, he was at the church. Saturday, you know, he had a little bit of time to be back at the church all day Sunday. And maybe innately just in that, that, that area, I kind of got obsessed with time. You know what I mean? Like I, I really started seeing... You know, I didn't. I didn't want to do that shit. Like I was, you was not gonna lock me down for, you know, all day, and um, you know, and, and can't properly maneuver. Like he had no time for anything. Like and and I and I think some of the things that he did, like he didn't do anything wrong, but his passion was what I viewed as nothing. He was he was he was happy sitting in front of the TV eating peanuts and watching the baseball. That was his life: work, baseball, church. That was it. You know what I mean? I, I can t I can probably count. I went to the movies one time with my dad, and he sat behind me and went to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I, I never wanted that. And I can't say that that was like the the driver, but I was always obsessed with time. Like I was always trying to figure out like how to squeeze more time out of everything I do. So even when I went on T, I knew if I got there before six o'clock. I could catch people leaving the office and catch them on the streets of Manhattan to sell candy. Now, if we got there after seven, it was a graveyard. But then we knew if we kept it up between eight and nine, if we don't, if we didn't get the sales done between five thirty to six thirty, we got candy to sell them all. So, you know, for whatever reason, time became like a crazy, like obsession to me, just almost innately. And being able to to maneuver how you want kind of started factoring. And then the older I got, the more I started to process everything in the sense of, you know, I got this amount of time to do this. I got this amount of time to move here. And collectively, it wasn't, and, and I would love to, I would love to say that it was like a, uh, like an entrepreneurial gene. It wasn't. I didn't want to be broke and I didn't want to spend all my time doing it. Yeah. And yeah. It's yeah, it almost sounds like whether it's conscious or subconscious, it was, you know, probably at a young age, you, you, uh, I think all young boys want to be around their father and you saw your father never being around, but then you observing his lifestyle, like again, conscious or subconscious, you're like, Hey man, I, I, I've got to be able to invent a better way to go out there and do this. And, and you start doing that and proving it. And, and then we find, you know, with a lot of entrepreneurs, they, they had a young experience or a young path of entrepreneurship or are early on success, but then they allow the domestication of society to get to them where it's like, Oh, I do like, we're all conditioned, man. You, you, you listen to your teachers, you listen to your parents, you listen to your coaches. They know all of a sudden, boom, you got to go to this college, pick this career and, you know, become the sheep, if you will, for the rest of your life, which is the path most people follow. Um, so, so I find a lot of entrepreneurs end up getting sucked into that path because they feel like that's the thing they need to do. And then rediscover whether it's because they're miserable, whatever they regain that path back to entrepreneurship. Was that a similar thing to you, or or a, like was it always just boom, you know, straight up going out there making your own money, and your own path? I, always, and I think, I, and 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 I base it just on the ignorance. So I didn't know, I didn't process no the same way. You know what I mean? Like I always viewed no as the worst they could say to me is no. Yeah. You know I mean? So. It didn't matter what what we had to do in reference to you know any ideas and concepts and things that I wanted to do. Um, the the I didn't really have doubt because I didn't really care about them. Though. And I've always positioned myself that you know I'm pretty uh, self aware. If you want to say that? So I've always seen my when I was younger. I've always seen myself as my greatest fan club. I wasn't arrogant or, or, or ego driven. I just had a different perspective on what I wanted. And not to say that I was super clear, but I knew there were certain things that I didn't, I didn't want to do. So, you know, as I got older, I started to realize, you know, pain and power comes from the same place. You know what I mean? And, 
maybe the pain from me not, because my dad isn't emotional at all. Like, I've never, I've, I've seen my dad cry once. Like one time, and you know, little things he, he you know, he, he would say to me. And, and uh, so it kind of stunted me being emotional. You know what I mean? But there were certain keynotes that I knew I didn't want to do. I knew for a fact when I had children, which I have four, I have three boys and one girl, um, I would not be, it wouldn't be a, a point that I don't invest the time and engage. Not just like if we at the park, we all at the park. It's not just like, hey, go run. Like I'm on the swings, we riding bikes. We, like we in the park. Like I'm, I'm in kid mode at that, at that point. And, you know, really, like I said, I can only adapt that back. Now my mom was around and my mom was a soldier. I'll put it like this. If my mom's, if the Black Panthers existed at that time, she would be. Yeah. So was, you know, my mom was the truth. Um, and when I say on the truth, she would, she, we knew that if you couldn't get uh, the proper attention from dad, mom was there. She took me out. She, you know, connected me with these different, uh, you know, she, she was the first one to put me in front of a computer. It's the funny part. That's the funny shit. Like, I can remember she used to use the DOS and she used to do data entry and the whole screen was green. And, you know, when she got to points where I could put yes or no, that's where, like, she, she used to work for um, Panasonic and the yes or no buttons. Um, so she was, like, my first introduction to, I want to say, technology. Um, and I was always intrigued with, with how things worked. You know what I mean? Like, I would tear shit apart. Like, I would get new stuff, and I would open it up. So a lot of things that I do, it's just the reverse process of it. So, I mean, I really believe a lot of things that I do now is because I didn't have, and I didn't grow up poor. I just didn't, like I said, I just had a different, different, different process. So well, my dad just, his love was different. You know? yeah. So it forced me to, and, and now I know that. I didn't, I didn't understand that at the time, but it, 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 gave, it gave me a strength that I think a lot of kids don't have. And I don't know if it was intentional. I know it wasn't intentional. It wasn't intentional, and I could have went a different route. Like, my brother did go a different route. He couldn't, he couldn't process, you know, everything that was going on. But whether that's the case or not, but he went left, I went right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, my sister's always had a job. I've never had a job. You know what I mean? And, and the jobs that I did have lasted a day. Like, I was like, man, I can't do this shit. Like, I, no, I can't. <laughs> Like, I'm going. Like, I remember doing a security job, and he was like, you got to stand for eight hours. And I'm like, okay, cool. I can do that. And then the first 10 minutes was like, man, I can't do this shit. Like, I, I just left. Yeah. Well, I, lo I love what you said, um, where, where power and pain come from the same place. You know, right? Like, like the pain that you felt with your childhood. Not that it was, was bad, but you, you had enough pain of – like what you knew that like you felt that you needed what then you didn't want to deliver as, as a man in the future with your own kids. And that became your power. And a lot of people, they operate from this victimhood mindset where, where they're blaming everything on their circumstance and saying, Hey, here's the cards that I was dealt. And this is the difference between winners and losers, you know, winners, this is the card I was, cards I was dealt. Let me go out there and play the best hand. And like I said, like using that pain to become that power. And, and it just sounds like you, you, we're self-aware enough at a young age to be able to use that as a, a driving force, you know, right. Which, which is amazing, man. Um, all right. So then, so, so you've got this at a young age, you know, right. You're always out there hustling, figuring out how to, how to work, be an entrepreneur and, and, and pave your own path. What leads you into real estate, dude? Well, real estate came about because I, uh, I guess the misconception that every agent probably get, I'm a jump in and get rich. You find out that shit is different, <laughs> and um, and and I, you know what? I love real estate overall as a collective. I like the idea. I like meeting new people. I, you know, my background is in visual communications and design. Um, you know, I love seeing the, the just new houses and meeting new, new meeting people. Were was really the, the highlight. You know what I mean? Because it was growth, and I was always you know I grew up in a place where you 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 covered everything. Like you don't tell everything. Oh no, you can't tell me what you got. No, you don't share that. No, you know what I'm saying? So to be around people that I was willing to embrace, like, hey, you know, I quickly learned that that when you provide value, when you can provide value, um, nobody sees color when you, you know what I mean? So, you know, it, 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 it 
gave me a, a, a whole different perspective on getting in front of people. Um, and what made the, the shift was the real estate agents. You know, I got so tired of the narcissistic approach and, and the egos, that shit started to drive me crazy. And before I got jaded, um, I just figured I would start to step back. But as I was stepping back, I was already walking into my passion and things that I was like, really, like, I love marketing. I mean, I, I mean, like, I'm obsessed with, with marketing and, and, and uh, nuances to technology. And I just, I love that shit. Yep. So, so, but I know you, you created success in real estate to lead you to the path that you are now, right? Yeah. So, so it wasn't one of those things where you jump into real estate, you got so turned off that you just bailed, you know, oh, right? I so it's so like, what, you know, walk us through what it was like when you got started and, you know, what you did to create success and then ultimately what led to, cause what were you in real estate about four years before four you, years. yeah, before you, you, you went to your path now and it wasn't because you left because you were a statistic that wasn't successful. You found a way to create massive success, but then you're like, Hey, why I'm cr The reason I'm creating success here, which is my true passion. Now I can go show others how to create that same success. Exactly. I mean, even before I got my license, I did some investing. We did pretty well in investing until the bottom fell out. And um, I mean, the biggest, the biggest project we had, we had a land development we were doing. It was like, it was uh, 36 acres. Halfway through the project and uh, realized that we had more uh, land than it was worth. And, uh, you know, that, that, that put me like at rock bottom. I'm talking about like, like, like I was at zero, nothing. Like, hey, mom, you got room for me and the family type situation. Yeah. And um, from there, you know, collectively with my wife, we grinded it out. And when we made the transition to get into real estate, I knew I was good with people. Like, I, I, I got two ways with me. Either you like me or you don't. The gray doesn't exist with me. And, I, and, and we need to, we clear that up immediately. But I think I'm a pretty likable person. You know what I mean? And I understood at least the core concept that, if they want to buy a house, I know I can engage them enough to get them to buy a house. And in my very first year, um, I did, I did bad. Like I was, it was horrible. I'm not going to front like, oh, I killed it the first year. I think I sold maybe to two people in a midget. Like I, I didn't do anything the very first year. And I linked up with this broker called Raymond Fury, which I'll never forget him. And uh, I jumped on his team and he kind of really, really just started to, you know, uh, take me on in reference to, no, you should do this. And he didn't, he didn't push me. You know, he didn't push me in the sense of, no, 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 no. He kind of seen, seen the, the hustle in me and was guiding me through. And, you know, my, my uh, second year, um, we ramped up pretty good. By my third year, I was able to kind of calculate that we, I ramped up to about 10 million in sales. And my, no, my third year, my, first, my second year hit 10 million in sales. My third year, we ramped up only to about 13 million in sales. Yeah, that was about my peak. Um, last year, just out of part-time, because we were still we were building out the agency. I just started, decided to go full time with the agency. I think I tipped about six million sales just part time. And that was when I started to understand, you know, my, in my second year is when I really, really started to get a grip of what Facebook was starting to do, the capabilities of it. Um, and that's when all the different platforms was popping up. You know what I mean? A lot of different channels. But the ROI and just the, the at that time, everybody was screaming micro target, you know. Um, at that time, really start to adapt that into my business. That was the needle that tipped the scale for me and got me in front of more people because I didn't know when we, when we, when I, when I started selling real estate down here in South Jersey, I started in North Jersey. I knew a lot of people in North Jersey year two, year three. I didn't really know. I didn't know anybody. Like I moved down to South Jersey where it was, I knew nobody, everybody I met was new. Um, and it was interesting because you know, it's it's not complicated to sell real estate and when it comes to when you have the person or you have engaged the person and I quickly picked up I wasn't selling real estate I was selling me and from there between year three on to year four is when we started making that transition and, and because I was doing so well I started started interacting with a lot of different people and you know it's funny because when you start connecting with people the question is how are you doing this because I don't know you you know what I mean it's like oh you're not, you don't, you're not this, you're not that. And I was always low key, you know what I mean? Like even when we started to, because year three is when I started to build out a team. Um, and I put somebody in front of me because I didn't want the, 
I really didn't want the attention. Like I said, I think that came mainly from the my background. Like it's always, oh man, I'm sorry about that. My, my yeah, you're good. You're good. Um, I'm sorry about that. Um, and the reason when we started building out the team, and I built out a small team just to help out because I was on a team from uh, year two, going into year three, started building out my own team. But I put somebody in front of me just to kind of, kind of crush down the noise. Like I, I, got, I'm, I have no. It, it's, you it, know, it's funny when I say it to people, but I really don't have an ego. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I, I was, I was cool with the shadows. Like I was okay with just spell my name right on the check. So I cared yeah. about it at that time, you know, and. Uh, it gave me room to really start working on digital natives. And then going into year, year three is when things really started to ramp up. And I started to get in contact with more people. And then people would ask, like I said, what am I doing? I started teaching classes at just all these different brokerages. Like, hey, this is what I'm doing. And it was, it was, it was like alchemy. Though. Like, I'm like, this is what I'm doing. Like, look, it works. It's like, oh, this is, it was more, they were more, they were more in tune or more embracing the perception of I know than execution. And that shit amazed me. Like, like if you know, then you should be using. It, you know what I mean? Like it, it just it just amazed me. And it was more they 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 like that that concept. But the the I guess the uh osmosis side of it all or the uh the um you know the connection at at, at every uh class I would teach, people would be like, hey listen, I hear that. How much do you charge? And I had, no, I had no answer for it. And finally, my wife was like, listen, you need to give them a number. And I gave my first number. And when I seen that they accepted it, every time I did a class, I started giving numbers. And we started out with a low number. And as I got better in it, we started putting premium price into it. And it quickly helped me, helped us create the, the core values of why we don't work with single agents. Because single agents have, one, some of them going from deal to deal. You know, a lot of them don't understand, they don't have the proper infrastructure to take on a heavy influx of leads. And we just completely shifted from, we don't work with single agents, either you're a team or a broker, or you have a real business that can sustain, or real business that have the back and that can sustain the lead flow that we're about to pump you with. Yeah, love it, dude, love it, man. Yeah, I mean, what's so cool about this is, I mean, you, 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 obviously you, you dialed your business in, you went from two homes your first year to 10 million to 13 million. Um, but then that, was, that wasn't a lot of listings either. That was predominantly buyers. Yep. Yep. So, but, but what I love about, I mean, I love all of it, of course, but dude, it's, I meet agents every day that are like, Hey Josh, I'm getting asked to speak at these classes or speak here and but they, they have this scarcity mindset of I can't give the, this information away you know right and and the best things that have ever happened in my life is abundance you know like with the boot camp you know that I know you went through and 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 like with perfect store I mean all of the things that make me way way more money than my real estate company that I'm still involved in today um, came from operating from a place of abundance so you would have never had these dots connected if you didn't operate from a place of abundance and eliminate that ego you know and I bring this up because I think that's so key man is it, it, it's almost impossible to connect the dots and see what the demand is out there unless you're willing to share your gift with others you know right like how, what would you what would you say to that I mean we're, we're the only Real estate is the only industry that we have to cooperate with our competitors. Like you have to, you know what I mean? And, you know, it's always, it always tripped me out, the, the scarcity mindset that so many agents have when they say, well, I don't want them to know, or I don't want them to use. There, there aren't a lot of components that are, co are connected to real estate overall. You know what I mean? Like, it's not a whole lot of things you can do that, can, that a person can take and actually just, like, like, this is all mine. There's nothing proprietary about what we do. You know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. And agents, I mean, and I think, it, again, it falls back to the low barrier to, to enter. I think, you know, two weeks to become a professional, you know, you don't really know what, what that entails. You know what I mean? And this, the scarcity mindset is heavy, but I think it falls in tune with the ego and the, the narcissistic behavior collectively. So I think it's just a collection of things that people take on, but the abundance of it all, I, at this point, and you know, we really understood, and I really start to understand that 
the more I can teach a person, the better questions they can have. And my sole purpose at this point is to improve the industry, at least in my space. You know, like if, if you know what you can do with Facebook advertisement, I'm talking about definitively no, not not on some, you know, you go from ad to landing page and you know, let's 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 just target this cold audience. Like when you really understand audience segmentation and pixel isolation, all this other cool stuff that you can do, your questions become much better. And I think the industry as a collective can improve, but the, you know, we got brokers selling agents the same bullshit of here's a card, here's your phone, you know, go knock on some doors. You know, it's just, it's just amazing. And even, even when, when, uh, when I took the class and I was doing the, uh, the mega open houses, people would look at me like I was crazy. Like it, it was bogged out. Like, man, you putting out like 30, 40 signs. I was like, yeah, that's the, that's, that's, that's the process. Like, and then they would see the traffic that would come through. And I keep in mind, I had, I was generating leads from Facebook. It didn't, it, I don't, I didn't remove what works. You know what I mean? I just added to it. I improved to, I improved on it. And that scarcity mindset comes into play because no one wants to evolve. Like they want to be, they want to stay stuck. The nostalgia in this industry is like mind blowing. Like they love this shit. Like, oh, well, uh, here's my card. You know what I mean? And that's a, that's a key thing that, that I don't know if people know or not, but if you guys ever see this, there's, there's a video that Josh got where that shit hit home with the no card situation where it made you, where, where it positions you to be more reactive than proactive. You know, it was so many, I, I'm about to start hopping on you real, real heavy because I mean, there's so many things I picked up from you, but I gotta keep the answer, keep on. <laughs> <laughs> but the scarcity mindset is because they don't want to evolve into the nuances. And yes, some of the things that we do work, but I don't think they're willing to take that, that chance. So when all you got is this, what do you share? You know what I mean? Like if, if, if it's all you got is this, you, you can't share. You're not positioned. You're not even a posture to share yet. You know what I mean? And that really says, I've noticed a lot of people that when they have like a strong business, abundance is easy to them. You know what I mean? And, I guess it would be easy if you have so much, but just as a collective, I think that's just something that should be taught in the industry because we have to pre we have to cooperate with our competitors. That makes the, the transactions easier. It makes the makes the process like this business does not have to be complicated at all. Yeah. And it isn't, you know, like, and you, you already said this, but I mean, the, well, not just the real estate business, all business is simplistic. It's when we get in the way of our own selves, like we end up complicating the process. Right. And um, so, so let's kind of go tactical into Facebook, right? Because a lot of people sit there and say, Oh, Facebook doesn't work or, or Facebook won't work in my market or Facebook doesn't work in luxury and works here. Like I had a dude on the podcast um, last week massive luxury agent, the number one agent in New Hampshire and always sells is like three, four biggest sell, you know, a couple of years ago is $12 million. And, uh, um, and he is so deep into Facebook. Um, and I only do two things, right? So like this year, I mean, it is, we're recording this podcast right now. It's, it's November 2nd, 2017. I've sold 611 homes year to date. My team has, and we do two things. We do mega open houses and we do Facebook, right? And, and a, a lot of them coexist because my mega open houses, I run Facebook ads and I'll generate 30, 40 leads before I even do my mega open house. And so, so a lot of it coexists, but it, it, we just get dialed on those two things. And people ask, I hear it constantly, you know, Facebook doesn't work, open houses don't work, which obviously, you know, you and I both can prove wrong there. But when it comes to Facebook specifically, because that's what, you're, what you've evolved to when your agency I don't know if it's just Facebook specific, but online social media advertising, um, kind, of, kind of walk us into like, what did you start doing in your, your real estate business and then transition that into like what you're doing today that's killing it for real estate agents on Facebook? Well, I mean, of course, the, the, the basics of add into a landing page is key. And the, the reason why, uh, and, it, and you know what it is, it's the disciplines that a lot of agents don't have. You know what I mean? Simple as hyper local. We have we have three core components: hyper local, relevancy, and omnipresence. You can take those disciplines. Um, you will absolutely win. And hyper local consists of pick a zip code, 
let's 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 talk to let's see first let's see if that zip code is even seasoned to take on advertisement and we run numbers we make sure the absorption rate makes sense we make sure the turnover is there i mean i don't care if it's a million dollar market or not if it's only six homes selling we're wasting our time trying to advertise there so we look for the proper turnover to see if that that area is even seasoned for advertising then the next stage is we completely cut out the agent in reference to we're going to talk to the community because we're going to give only relevant content so we build out a community page not just the typical but we start to connect with all the community pages that have consistency with that particular page now we're sharing content we're not hoarding anything yes in description wise we stay compliant but we start to connect with the community. Facebook rewards that. And that's the thing that people don't understand. People people misinterpret the internet as being, you know, a bunch of numbers and algorithms and, you know, the internet is me and you. The internet is community based. Facebook understands that. And when you can start connecting community, not just geographically, but understand that when you're talking to whatever you're selling, that person, Facebook starts to reward that and start to really pump up the algorithms behind they, they they support that heavily, you know. Now, once you start to get that cycle going, one by just just by uh, by a byproduct, that alone will start to make you omnipresent in that omnipresence in that community. When you start to run your ads, you're almost guaranteed to get anywhere between a nine and ten relevancy score as long as you keep that message consistent, you know. And we don't go out there and pump out. We tell every client. You know, well, I want to do this and 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 um, put my picture here, and we're not putting your picture nowhere. Be the agent when you get them on the phone. Right now, only thing we're providing is relevant content and pure value, 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 and that's when you start to win when it comes to Facebook. Because I'll, I'll say, and 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 this year, I can I can even jump even closer. In the past six months. The intelligence that the algorithm has gotten in Facebook when it comes to the objective is absolutely insane. Like the objectives are precise now. If you want traffic, you're going to get traffic. If you want conversions, you're going to get conversions. If you want engagement, you're going to get engagement. And it doesn't cross doesn't cross anymore. Well, you used to run an engagement ad and get people clicking and generating leads from. That's not happening anymore. They're gonna get you pure engagement now. What we start to do is understanding how these conversations work, same thing, community. We start to take the engagement and we create that social proof for like a full week. We take that, that uh, we start to hack, and, and uh, I might get, I don't wanna get too techy, but we start to hack that campaign. We pull that post, that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that ad post. We tie it into a target or a traffic or conversion. And now you don't even have to do a, a traffic ad anymore. You can go straight to conversion, set it so when you get the 25 pixel fires, Facebook will automatically shift your campaign straight into a conversion a conversion ad. So I mean, the intelligence of what it can do is just, it's insane. But again, taking the time to understand what these components are, I mean, it's, it's only three components in an ad. We have ad, objective, and excuse me, the objective, ad set, and ad. You know what I mean? That's it. You know, we got the ad, which is what do we want Facebook to do? We have the objective, who do we want them to talk to? And then we have the, excuse me, the uh, the objective. Finally is the, I'm getting ahead of myself. The, the finally is the ad. That's the creative. What do you want to show? And when you start to run out there and be an agent right in front of people, no one's interested in that right now, Facebook. They want value. And you can discredit, even you can be the best agent on the planet. You can discredit yourself because people are looking. I mean, if we really, really want to be serious about it, one, price rules when we're selling a house, and two, everybody knows an agent. Everybody. So to see you like, hey, you know, uh, come to my open house or come see this house or, or uh, look at me, I sell X, Y, Z houses, everybody's number one too. So. I don't even know what that even means anymore when people say, well, I'm number one in my, 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 my market, whatever. But people see that and now you discredit yourself where a person would be interested in your, 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 your offer, they're not gonna move forward anymore. You know, So you know, just that core basics of before you start to run a campaign, know your numbers. Find out, and, and you should, and, and they just should know. We should know what the objective, I mean, what the uh, absorption rate is. We should know what the market turnover is. 
I don't care if you love this community, if those numbers don't make sense, then you're wasting your time running or building out a campaign to, to even try and drive any type of lead generation tool. Yeah. And, and I agree with that. I mean, because whether it's, I mean, to me, real estate is all about geographical farming. You know, right? And and most real most of the real estate community they hear geographical farming, they think of direct mail. I'm like, no, dude. I mean, it could be open house, it could be Facebook ads, it could be a combination of so many things. But it's identifying the area, the right area that you want to dominate market share in over time. You know, right? So like, in, in my price point, it's different at every price point. You know, but the three things I'm looking for: number one is my ideal client moving there, who I connect with the best, who gives me the roast repeat referral business, who I enjoy working with. Right? Are they moving there? Number two. And my price point, because I'm in like the 250 price point, I want to see a 10% year over year conversion rate. You know, right? If, it, if it's below that in my price point, it doesn't work for me. Then I go into market share, dominance of market share. You know, if I have more than one agent with close to 20% market share, whether it's a subdivision or a zip code, you know, right, I'm trying to find an alternative. So then I've got the, the you know, my ideal clients moving there. I got the turnover rate that I need and I have the openness of, of getting in there and becoming the dominant agent as, as quickly as possible, hopefully, you know, right. Identifying those things. And then you start, whether it's direct mail, open houses or Facebook ads. I mean, I couldn't agree more, man. I mean, people just, they just try to blanket this shit. They just try to scatter it and blanket it. And, discipline. and yeah, they, the discipline of it all. Like I said, when you say hyper local, it triggers. It's like, oh yeah, you're right, you're right. And then you say, well, what what areas you want to what areas you want to focus on? And they're like, I want this city. I want no, that's too big. I need an area. Give me a zip code. Yeah, you know. Yep. And and they don't. A lot of people aren't comfortable with that at first. You know what I mean? Because they they're like, my 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 office is so much bigger, and I understand that. But what we're trying to do is we're trying to position you here, and we create that butterfly effect. But we have to get a starting point somewhere to start to position to be omnipresent. You can, we can, we can spread a bro. Let's start here. Now you tell a person that then you go deeper and like, listen, just off three zip codes, we can generate from a five hundred dollar ad spend about two hundred leads for you. Now, will it all be quality or will you, will it be some 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 junk? Of course. But what we're doing is we're positioning you one to be omnipresent and two multiple opportunities. We're trying to get you out there, but. We need the discipline to start somewhere first because we can't talk to the whole city yet. The whole city don't want to talk to you yet. Well, let's talk to a neighborhood right now. Yeah. Well, even on the numbers that you just shared, you know, right? If you have a 1% conversion ratio, right? One client acquisition for what, you know, Two two hundred dollar ad spin or, or, or whatever that breaks down to being. I mean, you go out there and bang out the the average price point across America. That's seven grand to spend two hundred bucks to make seven grand. You know, Statistic conversion is three to five percent when you have a decent when you have at least an eight point follow up sequence. Three to five percent that you can convert your leads into, you know, uh, a potential deal. But again, it's the discipline and the discipline overall is uh, it's just mind blowing that they don't have it. Even even just doing video, you you say, well, you know what, this is a great uh, campaign. Like we got this video view campaign, and we don't use the pixel at all. We jump into three different videos and then we, we slam it inside a messenger bot. And now the person can talk directly to who that end consumer is because one, they engage with the messenger bot and two, they book an appointment like with Calendly or something, or, you know, like we, we can talk directly to them. Um, it's amazing. It's kind of mind blowing that they, you say, well, we need videos for this. Uh, I don't do video. My man, you do realize they're going to see you eventually, right? Right. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah, get over it, right? Get, get over yourself. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you, dude. So um, real, real quick, when it comes to the chatbot, I mean, is this something that you guys have created your own chatbot? Are you using something like a mini chat or is there other, is it mini chat? Yeah, mini chat. I mean, it's, it, I mean, right now, it, we haven't really seen any real ROI with the chat box. It's just a great way to push people through. Um, it's just, a, it's just a, a, a component inside the funnel collectively. It's a great way to end it off. Um, especially with Facebook having the ability to make calls now, um, you know, we use, we use software like Loom for video or uh, video emails, which is a really cheap. I mean, it's, it's free and it's a video emailing tool that we use as an extension to, um, to Google Chrome. Um, of course you got the base, the, uh, Facebook chat. I mean, you know, the, uh, the DM. So 
to, to connect people. I mean, the same concept of talk to people where they are still exists. And these components are given, like, like sometimes we, 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 we talk to people, you know, make the call through Facebook, it tripped them the hell out. Like, oh man, I didn't know yeah. you could do that. It's a big phone right at the top. <laughs> like it's, it's right there, you know what I mean? But I mean, of course, I don't expect everybody to, to be aware of it, but as an agent, we are a belly to belly business. You know what I mean? We connect with people and we forget that concept that we are supposed to not sell a house, connect with the person. When you lose that concept, the connection, that's why you struggle. You're killing yourself and you're trying to sell, that you can't sell a house, stop it. You, don't, you might as well fall back with that because at the end of the day, price rules and sometimes we become just glorified keys. As insulting as that may sound, sometimes that happens, you know what I mean? Um, but the connection that we can do with Facebook and with messenger bots, we like how that engagement go because it puts us in front of real people. You can't really, you can't fake a messenger box. You can avoid the conversation after, but you can't fake that you clicked it. And it's, it's, it's permission given. It's not like it's forced. You know, like they're clicking and saying, hey, we will be sending you the information through DM, you know, and you know, you, 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 and they say yes. So it's not like it's, it's, it's a trick. They're expecting something from messenger bot and what the bot does, we make the messenger bot have two sequence touches. We welcome them and then we, we, we offer whatever appointment schedule that's there. And it's up to the consumer or the agent to pick up that conversation after the messenger bot talk. Yeah. With two ways, you can say, you know, um, hey, I see that you booked the appointment and, and just welcome them and be real engaging. Or they can fin finish the conversation. Hey, I see you didn't schedule your appointment. Any reason why? Or, you know what I mean? So it, it's, just, it's just a great way to connect. But we, we haven't really seen any real ROI from that directly. Yeah. Love it, dude. So, all right. So you, you got a realtor that they, they've identified their area. They, they grasp that they've identified the area. And then, and then from there, you really have two, well, I mean, there's multiple components, right? You, you got you to gotta generate the Facebook lead. You've got to have the follow-up sequence. And then, of course, you've got to be dialed enough on your skills to be able to close that, that appointment and do a client and, and, you know, take on your realtor hat and, and do that stuff. But assuming that a realtor knows how to conduct an appointment, close the appointment, go out there and sell a house or sell them a house. So then from there, generating the Facebook lead and the follow-up sequence, if we were to really dial those in, because it sounds to me, and correct me if I'm wrong, it sounds to me like you guys start with some type of, of an engagement process, whether it's traffic ads or whatever that you're doing, and then doing some type of retargeting and do a conversion ad to then get them as a lead, and that's how you get a cost per lead down, and then you have the follow-up sequence. But when it comes to the Facebook ads specifically, can you just elaborate, maybe give an example of a strategy you know, for a realtor that you're working with right now that's working really well for that? Um, the easiest ads to build out are syndicated sites. You know what I mean? We, we, we take, instead of letting, and it's the same thing, it's funny that we're so okay with Zillow, I mean, excuse me, yeah, with Zillow and Trulia using our information, but we won't use it ourselves. You know, um, the syndicated site is the easiest site to start to create some type of stamp inside the community, and you never have to turn it off. You know, and what it is, is you give the property that you're selling to the, to the end consumer through Facebook, you know, in reference to this is the property, of course, we're going to get the address. We give a front end image. Um, and those type of campaigns never have to stop, which we start with those because they're easy to digest and they're, they're super cheap. Even if somebody that doesn't know anything about Facebook, they know they profit. They know their listings. If they don't have a listing, they can borrow a listing. You know, so those are like the starting point that we do to get the, get, uh, get the campaigns going. So we build at least three campaigns that we really never shut off when we, when we start to work with a client. That way, we're just banging out, you know, um, just leads. We're, we're, we're solidifying pixel uh, pixel data because pixel feeds the, you know, if you're not using a pixel, then you, you're just dead in the water. Pixel yeah. feed, you know, the audience. 75% of the conversions do come from the retargeting. Now we can be creative because we created now an audience to start to segment who we're talking to in reference to different regions, you know what I mean? You know, per zip code, you know? Um, but that's the original starting point. Anybody can do that. Anybody can take a listing. And what I did, you know, what we did was the funnels are simple on that side. It's a two pager, you know, here's the information. Here's where you opt in. Uh, here's your offer, period. That's simple as that. And from there, you know, the main thing for that we do is one to create just the engagement to find out how the consumer is interacting with, with, uh, with the uh, particular campaigns because 
when you start to do, when you start to do uh, uh, syndicated campaigns, if no one is clicking it, then we need to figure out why. You know what I mean? So now we may shift that off to something like a guide, you know, and we don't, we don't position guides in the sense of information because information is in abundance. We try and give value. So those are like the easiest campaigns to start, but the syndicated campaigns are where any agent should be starting with. And it is the exact same concept of what you're doing now. You're letting realtor.com, Zillow, they're using the information. Why don't you take that back and you use it for yourself now, instead of them clicking Zillow, they click in your campaign and talking directly to you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, it, it, it's, I think for the agent to survive long-term, we must learn how to become our own Zillow, our own realtor.com. We, we, we've, we can't keep feeding them. And, and, and two, just on a, on a selfish ROI perspective, why the yeah. fuck would I pay Zillow 37 bucks or 45 bucks or 50 bucks a lead? When I can do the same thing for 250 or three bucks. Or if I'm on a small budget, dude, I mean, I, I have, I've had it where I, I'm like seven cents a lead on a very small budget. Now when I'm spending 10 grand a month, it's hard for me to get under three bucks, you know, a budget because as you, as you scale, it seems to be a little bit more difficult. But yeah, I mean, it, it, we, we've got to go out there and do exactly what you said, man. Just become your own Zillow. And, and what they do is, we, Zillow just gives them what they want. They're giving them the property information. So you get a website, has the IDX, gives them all that information. Uh, you, it, it, it's, and here's what's cool. You can reverse look up all Zillow ads, all realtor.com ads, see what they're doing that's working and then just apply the same thing, but drive them to your site, get eyeballs in your site, get them to register and then have your follow up protocol. Um, I mean, it's crushing costs of what, what Zillow sells you. I mean, they never, they don't sell you leads. They sell you impressions. I mean, with Facebook, you get a thousand, thousand impressions for like $2. Yeah. And like it's, you know, in, in Zillow, that's like 50, 60 bucks. What is it? It's 300 for 10,000 impressions. What kind of shit is that? Yeah, now that's a drill. I used, so I used to be like 16 grand a month deep with Zillow. And, but that's when they, they, so this was, I can't remember how many years ago, maybe like five, six years ago or whatever. I could be wrong on that. It might have been further back. But they, you, it used to be on cost per click and they switched it into impressions. And I went from like 14 bucks a lead to like 45 bucks a lead overnight. And you're locked into a contract. You had, you know, no, no choice in the manner. But as you said, power and pain, uh, uh, pain and power come from the same place. They end up being a blessing because that's what woke me up to realize, man, I can't be vulnerable. And at that time, then, you know, Google pay-per-click was the, the, the juggernaut. So I, I learned how to do my own Google pay-per-click. And then Facebook disrupted where now Google pay-per-click can't compare to Facebook. But it's the same concepts. You just, you got to learn how to fish for yourself. Or if you're not going to fish for yourself and learn this stuff, you know, I mean, I don't know what your ad spend has been for you yourself and your clients, but I'm sure it's been in the millions, right? And I spend, you know, well over half a million a, a, a year. So like guys like you and I have been forced to learn this stuff, but if you're not willing to learn this stuff, go hire a company like yours. It'll still be, the ROI will be 10 X what you can get on ZillowRealtor.com, even if you're paying a company like yours. Hands down, hands down. I mean, the unprepared will always get abused. So, I mean, and it's, it's, and it, and it goes back to the beginning stages of, Unfortunately, the leaders in these these offices don't know. You know, yeah. what I mean? they don't know. They, you know, they they don't they don't they don't have the proper information to pass on and tell a person that you know Facebook is the internet. You know, Google pulls their data from Facebook. Now. I mean, yeah. I mean, they're in a position of data aggregation. Like, who else has the information that Facebook has? I mean, they're telling you shit you did five years ago. Like, hey, remember this? Here you go. Look, right, like. What other, what other platform is doing this type of information? You know, even just geographically, you tell somebody, you know, Facebook know where you are right now. You're like, no, no, you didn't. No, they don't. When do you turn Facebook off? Or well, whoever logs out, you know? So the, the, the position that they're in is pure data aggregation. And, and if you can really, really embrace that, the limitations of what Facebook can do for your business is absolutely limitless. I mean, we got a guy that, that we, we, we've been coaching for going on about seven, eight months now. He's going to close the year at over a quarter million dollars in, in gross profits. This is his first year selling real estate. Yeah, it's crazy. It forced him to build a team. Did he build a team right? No, but he needed help to take on the influx of business. Yeah. You'll get it right. You know what I mean? Bump his head enough. You'll get it right. But, you know, the, the, the potential of what your business can do 
you, we don't have to, it doesn't have to be feast to famine in this industry. And that's just, that's the poor, that's the poorest thing. I, that's, the, that's, the, that's the weakest mindset I've seen in the industry because they prepare in our fourth quarter, oh, it's going to slow down for me. So let me start, let me start stacking. Let me, no, this is when you ramp up. Like, you know, we had a client the, just uh, two weeks ago, no, a week ago. He, he, he reached out and was like, you know, I'm going to hold off until January because it's not going to be dead. And I'm like, dude, this is when you ramp up. Like, it, how, how is that even logical? You know, oh, you know, I, you know, this, this is this is where everything stopped. This is when we kick in the gear. Like you, my well, man, you 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 don't you don't need to fight for a line. You just need to open the cage. Like unlock the door. Yeah. Like unlock the door, man. Let us go to work. Limited mindset. He, he couldn't see that. He seen the bill. It didn't make any. And he's close. He was closing deals too. He just he just seen like oh, what it would cost for the next this fourth quarter. I'm gonna ramp back up in January. That's if the doors are open in January. You know, yeah. like, we're not, you know, I hate to put it like that, but you know, you can't just whore us out. Like we may not be available for you in January. Right. Yeah. It's uh, you know, it's funny. Cause I, I just did a weekly team meeting this morning, uh, two hours before you and I jumped on this webinar and we just had that conversation about the holidays and I'm like, you have four days, you know, during, during the holiday season that are really like, you know, Thanksgiving, Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, you know, right? New Year's Eve, you know, whatever, or New Year's Day that people take off. And I'm like, but the industry gives that excuse to take 60 days off because of four days, you know, right? And yes, if you look at the MLS data, there are less sales, but you got 90% of the industry taking it off, right? So, so, and, and the, the, what you just said is exact conversation I just had with my team is that is pedal on the metal time. Yeah, there's less sales, but there's way more business to be had because you have so much less people working. And then too, during the holiday season, people that are looking are way more committed, you know, right? So that for me, whether it's recruiting or, or on the buyer seller side, man, we ramp up, you know, it, it, it's like three X time, you know, with that. So, so I couldn't agree more dude. And then, all right. So let's just say a realtor is like, all right, you know, I'm going to either, you know, hire your, your company or I'm going to um, figure this Facebook stuff on my own. You know, I'm going to identify the pixel or, 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 and I agree with you, you know, in the boot camp, as you know, I mean, I'm, I'm heavy on getting your pixel installed, getting it right. You know, like for me, like just say the boot camp. you know, I'm, just, I'm getting ready to do another boot camp that launches um, November 27th. I have two webinars that I do two different webinar topics. Um, in each campaign, um, I built out 90 ad sets in each campaign, each ad set, you know, also split testing different photos and different ad copy. Um, and it takes me, I don't know, four hours per campaign to set up. But if that pixel didn't exist, you know, right? Cause you can, you can sit there and say, okay, women um, on their mobile newsfeed between this age group, this picture is what works well. So I can shut everything else off, you know, right? Men desktop, right column, this topic, this ad copy, this, you know, right, shuts off. So it can make the difference between paying 15 bucks a lead to paying two bucks a lead. So, so, uh, and then the retargeting capabilities and there, there's so much with it. So, but let's just say they get all that dialed in um, or to even choose, like I said, to go out there and work with a company like yours, but the agent still has to jump in on the follow-up campaigns. And I'm guessing that this is why you work with teams, right? Because an individual agent doesn't necessarily have the time or the focus to follow up to get the high conversion rate. So they're not going to see the necessarily those results compared to like, I have two ISAs on my team that 12 hours a day are grinding on that lead follow-up. So, so talk to us about then like agents always think leads solve all their problems. And I'm like, yeah, it, it, it's the ability to convert those leads to appointments. Lead, you need leads, but if you don't convert them and have a follow-up sequence, like you're just, you're just pissing them with your money. So talk to us about the, the fault sequences that you guys recommend, that you do, that your most successful clients are doing to create success with that. Well, the, the very first thing we do is, is I mean, we, we do want our clients to understand the initial contact should be in the first half an hour. If you can get in the first 15 minutes before they forget what they filled out, it's always great. Um, right behind that, we create an eight-point sequence right, right initial. As soon as it goes out, we have eight-point eight touches prepared for an email sequence to come behind it behind that 
we tie in um, texting, video texting, and then we try to encourage the, the client to get involved into email texting, I mean, excuse me, email videos, which is extremely powerful. On top of, let's talk to the consumer natively where they contacted you from. You can make a call from Facebook, you know, so if you don't want to use the phone, make that call from there. And if it doesn't connect from there, at least engage with them via a DM. Now we do, sometimes they give us fake information, so it doesn't always happen like that unless we're doing something like a messenger bot. Um, But we try and really, really tighten the noose when it comes to the follow-up sequence in reference on our side, because the goal is to to create the re-engagement until the agent can get them to leave on the phone or until they get to the point of conversion. So the eight-point touches are super important because we want to, you know, in between that that first week, it's like it's like fire week. You know what I mean? Because that's when they're pretty much the hottest. You know, then we fall into week two, and it slows down a little bit. But with the pixel capabilities, we're able to position that message back in front of them. So whether it be you know a half of half a contact, whether name and email or full contact. We want to re-engage them with the whole new message behind it to position the agent to now you can be an agent because they're they're warmer now. And that's the, you know, of course, that's the power of the pixel. And depending on what type of campaign we're running, would make sense of what type of sequence we're running. Because we have, like I said, we have a video view campaign that it it takes the consumer from and this this isn't we don't even need the we don't even really need the pixel from here. We use the um, the uh, connection between the video. So the first video gets a 50% audience built, and then we put a video behind that. And then after the second video, we put a 75% audience built. And if the person makes it to that third video, they don't watch one, two, three videos of who you are. And that third video, you can be the agent. Now you can get more in depth of who you are and take them into some type of conversion in reference to scheduling appointments, filling out your funnel. Um, you know, moving forward in the conversion side. So it really depends on what type of campaign we're running, but we have follow-up sequences from eight days on up to 300 days if, if it needs to. And we really steer clear of the 300 situation because that's more just to, that's just to keep it going. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. that's almost like a courtesy if, if you want to say, you know, cause I mean, if you ain't, if you didn't make a move in 300 days, I mean, 350, 365 days, um, yeah, it'll happen, but it's just to keep you top of mind at that point. But that's when you want to tie in, you know, nuances like, you know, pure value inside your community pages, position them with, with, with information that will be relevant to the community that they seem that they were engaged with, you know. Um, so those, the, the follow-up sequence will, really will determine what type of campaign will bond with flowing. But if an agent can create at least a five-touch sequence, they have a higher chance of converting that lead. And I'm not talking about just, I got to get them on the phone. Yes, that's the end all be all. If you want to get them on the phone, but if you can make that connection at some point, whether it be email, texting, video texting, video email, Facebook DM, Facebook, you just need to touch them and get in front of them. That, can, that first five days is super important to, to make that connection. And if they miss that, then that's why, that's, this is when we come in and we pick up the ball also to, to keep that because the goal is just to re-engage them like i can't convert them. i gotta put them back in front of you and we let everybody know we we always we're always passing the ball back to you you know passing the ball back to you but you know and you know from that just just even that that part of not working with a single agent kind of speared us into a few more things with the company so the follow-up sequence, if, if an agent can get them in the first five days, at least touch them. I'm not saying convert them. I'm not saying take them out. Just touch them to see at least that you exist. That that conversion ratio, that, that just skyrockets. Because now you can you can manually take them to another type of sequence. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't agree more, dude. I mean, your average, your average Facebook, if we look at your average Facebook leader, 6.7 months out from wanting to meet with an agent. You know, but there's no reason that you can't have that immediate conversation. I, you know, lead from a place of contribution, develop that relationship, develop that com- connection, identify their time frame, and then have another protocol and platform to put them on. And if you do your job, you are going to convert them. And I don't give a shit if somebody's looking to buy tomorrow or sell tomorrow, or in three months, six months, 12, because dude, even two years down the road, I'm not going anywhere. 
you know, right. Um, eventually that funnel is going to build up and th those people are going to close. And, you know, like our follow-up sequence is, it, I mean, I have a thousand day follow-up sequence. Um, well, it really goes indefinitely because we have a ton of mass stuff that we do, but when that lead comes in, right, they, they, they get a, a video email text, you know, uh, uh, these are autoresponders, but an email autoresponder, a video email text, a call within five minutes. Um, then we hit them with, um, um, another three video text messages and another six phone calls. So again, a total of six phone calls in the first 14 days and then like, you know, four video texts, and, but it's all of that engagement. And I don't know if you've experienced this, but I don't, I don't necessarily get a ton of people off of video text that are saying, yeah, I want to work with you off the video text, but what ha it doubles our call answer ratio. And then when we get them on the phone, like the relationship's already there. They already feel like they know us. That's so it's bad. such a warm conversation. Yeah, when they see the video, it's, it's more of a shock factor. You know what I mean? Yeah. People, people forget that marketing, the key to marketing, one-on-one -on -one in marketing is just to be memorable. Yeah. There's nothing to do with anything else. You know what I mean? You know, you're not trying to be accepted. You're just trying to be memorable. So when you do little things and nuances like a video text or, or, or really video, um, it's really, really interesting because you, you can almost pre-frame that in consumer that if they even like you, they may not be interested in you at first. You know what I mean? And, and you know, it, 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 one, saves you a whole hell of a lot of time running after a person that they just want to use you to see this one house, but they don't like you or they, they're not interested in you. So it really pre-frames the person that if they're interested in working with you as a person or just interested in you as a person, it helps that it helps that conversation. If they like you or you seem, you can really engage and tap into that epiphany bridge in your video, went hands down. And again, it's just, it's just mind blowing at the agents that don't embrace video. Like video is like a, a, an extremely powerful tool for us in the industry. Just, 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 just I mean, the, the reach that we can, the things that we can do with video, especially if you're willing to, you know, to take the time to be authentic, be who you are, and give value. But most agents don't come from that place of contribution. So it shows, you know what I mean? Like, it's, bullshit shows through the video. You know what yeah. I mean? It, it does. You know, as much as people think like, no, 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 my man, you, you got the personality of a glass of water. Like, we got to step this up, <laughs> you know? Um, so, it, it, you know, but it's just, you need to, they just need to embrace that. And it, 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 it hurts to see that um, because it's the misconception that so many agents have about the industry is, is, is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't agree more, dude. Um, yeah. I mean, the next best thing from being face to face is video. You know, it's like, it's like my wife and kids just went on, on vacation. I, I, I had to stick back in town cause I had a bunch of work stuff going on and an event I was putting on, but um, for a kid's fall break, they're, they're back in Michigan. <laughs> I'm not getting on the phone with them. I'm not emailing them. Dude, we're FaceTiming. Like, it, it, I mean, it's the next best thing from being face-to-face, -face, whether it's with a client, a, a lead. I mean, whatever it is, it's so powerful. I couldn't agree more, dude. I, I know we're going super long on time, and I could pick your brain for three days straight on this stuff. Um, but I, uh, those that are watching, that are, that are here right now, because I know, I know the vast majority get so – intimidated by this stuff because it is I mean the reality is dude it is a massive learning curve right if somebody wants to get to the level that you're at and I don't want to put you and I on the same level because you're you're at a, you know I mean I do very well with it but you you kick my ass you know, you know right so so um but I do pretty well with it but I will say I mean it it, it took me spinning hundreds of thousands of dollars, you know, right? And I was having success out of the gate, but I mean, to really get it really dialed in to the point where I felt like I'd, I'd somewhat mastered it. I mean, it was several hundred thousand dollars of, of, of tweaking and learning. And, and I get that a lot of realtors aren't going to take that time yeah, plus they don't have the personality like you and I where I'm guessing you're, you, you sounds like you're wired just like me where we can sit behind a computer for 12 hours and we're just obsessed with funnels and systems and processes and learning this stuff. Um, if somebody though is just like, screw it, dude, I, I, I don't want to go through the learning curve. I just want to work with you, James. I want to work with you and your company. I've got a team. I've got a brokerage. We've got a good ad spend. We want to kill it. Where is the best place, dude, to learn more about you, to get in touch with you, to, to you know, go out there and, and, and sign up with your company? Where's the best place to do that? Well, the, it, it's cool that you said this because we, we broke the company up into three, three tiers. So we have the, the Facebook advertising side, and then we have the marketing side, which we call those omnipresent campaigns. 
uh, which that, that consists of visual communication and, you know, just uh, original content. And then the third tier is we built out an entire coaching course um, where I consult. Right now, I think we have about 62 people that's inside the coaching course. Everything about my business is inside this course. You know, every part of the campaign we do, uh, everything in reference to what Facebook is doing, we do, we do uh, uh, weekly strategy sessions where we get on video and we, we, we I, I go through, you know, bottlenecks of what this person is dealing with. Um, in reference to their campaign, I'm pretty accessible in, in the entire process because I would I would teach a person this stuff for free. I just don't want them to waste my time. So we put a premium price on it just to remove the the we got a no dickhead rule. You know? yeah. <laughs> we, got, we tell them so anybody that's interested in coaching with me, they have to talk to me first to see if they even qualify for it. But that's the best area when it comes to a person that really want to learn this stuff. I give everything we're doing in reference to digital natives. Um, and what people don't know is, you know, Facebook daily, when we, every day, Facebook is running between 15 to 17 platforms of Facebook daily. Every day, they're testing on us every day because they're in the, in the, in the uh, area of data aggregation. So Facebook isn't growing, it's actually evolving. And if anybody's pushing content that's not evolving with Facebook, you're wasting your time because in six months, it's gonna be irrelevant. The principles will stand, but the methods of, of, of what you should be doing will be gone. Like it, it, it'll be almost obsolete. So we evolve with the content. Like my, we, we're throwing a new content inside Hyperlocal. It's called Hyperlocal Domination. Um, we evolve and, and, and with the content um, just about bi-weekly putting that stuff in there. So, you know, if you're not a if you're not a team or a brokerage, and I don't want people to think that you have to have a lot of people, you have to have that structure for me to work with you. If you don't have the team structure and a real business, not this is a hobby or, you know, this is part-time, you know, you have to have that structure for us to take you serious and take you on as a client. Um, if you don't have that, you can absolutely learn this. And I move in the spirit of abundance. Like anybody that coaches with me, I mean, I have people that from agents to agency builders that are coaching with me directly that knew nothing. The agency builders knew nothing about the real estate industry. And I got a female that 30 days, she's killing it. You know, she's generating for her clients, you know, in, in 10 days, 40, 60 leads. They convert into leads. These leads are turning over in between. Because the real turnover, when you understand the market, the real turnover happens and it can happen in the first 60, 90 days. Yep. You know, when you understand the market. Um, but we got people that's inside the, the course. And I'm a big advocate on uh, results. Forget about the talk and the chatter. I let the people that's coaching with me talk about it. So if you go to my website, it's, it's jamesrenberg.com. And I put something special together for everybody that's here, slash GSD. It'll take you straight to a landing page where we, know, we normally charge two grand to coach with me. I cut that price in half. Still got to talk to me, though. <laughs> if there's no, I'm just going to pay and get it. Like we, we, we actually stick by that no dickhead rule because we have a really strong culture inside the group where people that are learning, um, you got people that are engaging. Like we move with everybody is introduced as family. And that's how we connect inside the group. Um, but just on that page, you'll see some of the results. You'll see some of the reviews. You got maybe about 10 or 15 people that gave video testimonies that'll tell you that what they've done in reference to their success level. Um, if they really, really want to learn this, I have a no bullshit policy if you coach with me. So I'm not, there isn't, is it, this isn't pink and fluffy. I'm not mean, I'm not mean spirited, but I remove the bullshit and we get to work. If you really want to learn it, let's go to work because I, I don't, I don't have the time to waste and I dedicate the time to make sure that everybody that coaches with me wins. There is no, well, I'm, I'm trying what, what's the problem? Let's fix it. Let's get to work. Now let's win. You have to be producing results. It's a must. It's not, you know, you can't be lurking with me. So just know, unfortunately, I had the luxury of, of coaching under the uh, Mr. Get It Done right in front of me here. Um, I operate in that same, that same spirit. Uh, we remove the bullshit. And if you really want to learn, that's one of the areas you can go to. And if you want to talk to me about hiring digital natives, we can definitely have that conversation. Um, if you got the budget, we can always talk. But we always teach, but we always focus people on, they need to learn. You can hire me, but 
I suggest for you to learn it. But like I said, they go to jamesrimbert.com slash GSD. Um, I cut that price down to 250 percent so it's like 997. Um, so you don't have to call me asking for the price. If you call or talk to me, I talk to people that's really decisive, and we determine if you, if you're good fit enough. Yeah, love it, love it, dude. So, um, and, and what's cool about this, those that are watching and listening, is you know James went through the 90 Day Mastery Bootcamp. Obviously, created big success in real estate. Second year in the business, 10 million in gross volume sales. Third year in the business, 13 million. Right? He didn't exit the business because he wasn't making it exit the business because he realized, Hey man, I got this superpower over here. That's dominating my real estate business. Um, that can help so many others. And the demand was there and he, you know, followed his, his passion. Um, but the other cool part about it is because James wasn't just part of the boot camp, He was part of the alumni and we worked together for what we worked together for before you made this transition. It was like well over a year, right? Together, yeah. you know, right. So, I mean, you know, the business, you know, obviously, you know, um, the content that I teach and, and combining with that, I mean, the, the, the beef I have, cause I've worked with a lot of the other ad agencies trying to get, cause my whole thing is, yeah, I know this stuff, but it's still fucking time consuming, you know, right? And for me, it's just not a good use of my time to spend a couple hours a day um, where my time's worth, you know, 2,500 bucks an hour to do this. But when they don't, if you hire an ad agency that doesn't know your industry, from my own personal experience, I'm telling you right now, they are going to fail. And I've hired ad agencies that are $6,500 a month to work with, plus a percentage of the ad budget, the best of the best. And, and it ha I haven't gotten results because they didn't know my industry, you know, right? So James knows real estate, obviously. And, and, and I'm guessing that's a huge part of your success. Not only do you know Facebook, but you know real estate. And you combine those two boom, game over. So, so love it. So make sure you guys take action on that. Um, we'll make sure wherever you're listening, watch and listen, well, that link will be right below. And I truly appreciate, I had no idea jumping this that you were doing that offer. So that's, that, that's massive appreciation to you, man. Um, so um, I know we're going long on time here. Um, those that are watching and listening, dude, are here because they want to go out there and create an epic, amazing life for themselves and their families. And they want to go out there and do what you've done. You know, we, before we hit the record button, we were talking about our love for real estate and how real estate, because both you and I got into real estate, not necessarily to go out there and grow a massive real estate companies, you know, it was almost a stepping stone. And, 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 and yeah, I still have my real estate team, but it's transitioned to so many other opportunities. I make way more money outside of real estate than I do in real estate. I still do well in real estate, but it's, there, there's so many just brilliant things to learn. And it's such a brilliant stepping stone. And, and with all that being said, man, do you have any last words of advice or inspiration that you'd like to leave our listeners with so they can go out there and kick ass just like you're doing? Yeah, definitely. In this day and age, this is such an amazing, I mean, there's a lot of shit that's happening collectively, but we're living in such a, an amazing time that fortune follows speed. Now. If you're willing to execute fast, you can cross correct at any point without really damaging who you are. Um, but the first thing you got to do is, you know, doubt will always be a traitor to you. It will always betray your ideas. It will always, always tell you you can't do. And I am living proof that what what this particular vertical this this particular vertical can do for your business, it's it's absolutely limitless of where you can take your business. I mean, what other what other platform you can honestly engage with the person? And if you honestly invest the time, you can be a seven figure situation before the year is out, hands down. As long as you're willing to dedicate and commit to you know uh, your craft. And getting in front of getting your message in front of that particular person, even if you you know it doesn't have to be perfect, not at all. So remove that doubt because doubt will always be a traitor to your ideas. It will always betray your ideas. Um, and right now, what what you what we need to really embrace is fortune does follow speed. It's not about getting it correct now. Just get out there and get to work. Because I mean, at the end of the day, you know, either you really take this to heart. You always be in that position of beast of man. Yeah. Powerful words, man. My, my, one of my favorite business books of all time is uh, Ready, Fire, Aim. Ah, yeah, man. right? Yeah, everybody's trying to ready, aim, fire. And it's just like, no, man, you, you go out there, you take that message. Just exactly what you just said, man. And you're going to get things right. You're going to get things wrong. You know, but a lot of times we learn more on what we got wrong and then we course correct and, and, and eventually get them right. And 
such powerful words, dude. I live by two philosophies, man. Like when your back is against the wall, you can either you can either get through it or you can get better. Yeah. You choose to get better. Yeah. Love it, love it. So those watching, listen, I know I end every podcast with this, but information without implementation truly is just the start of delusion. Information is a power. It's taking that information, taking massive action on it that gives you the power to go out there and create the life that you know you want and deserve. And James shared so many amazing pieces of advice with you guys. They take something that you learn, go out there and immediately take massive action on it so you can go out there and create the life you know you want and deserve. And again, those links will be right below wherever you're watching and listening. Um, we'll have that link that'll take you directly to James' site where, again, you can save 50% on the coaching if that's the right you decide to go, have a conversation with James to see if you're fit to go out there and run your, your, your campaigns for you. Um, so definitely take action on that right away. And James, man, um, I know we're going on about 90 minutes here on this podcast, dude, so I truly appreciate you taking time. You're busy to be here, man. This has been a lot of fun, dude. Oh, thank you. Yep. All right, you guys. Well, thanks again, and we will see you next time.